So it's my honor to introduce uh, Ronnie Yeager. He is a faculty member and research fellow at the Shalom Hartman Institute, and he's pursuing his doctorate at Bar Ilan University in the interdisciplinary program of culture and hermeneutics. He teaches at Tel Aviv University and is one of the founders of Beit Tefillah Israeli, a synagogue in the heart of Tel Aviv. Uh, he also spends a year at IDEA, the European Institute of Jewish Studies in Stockholm, Sweden, as a scholar in residence, so he gets around. Uh, and his um, writings and his teachings really speak to the heart of the issues of facing Israel and the Jewish world today. So we are so honored to have him teach us this morning. So he will begin uh, with our keynote uh, presentation, and then later we'll break out into breakout sessions, and I'll tell you what the plan is for those later. But we are honored to have him. Good morning. It's always, uh, I would say, almost the extent of frightening to speak with rabbis. So uh, I'm very happy to be here. And I would like to say also, start with a kind of a personal thought, that there is something so inspiring in a board of rabbis uh, coming from Israel and, and you know, sitting in a place where rabbis from different denominations, and also with differences, I'm sure, can still sit together and study together and talk. And I mean, this mere picture, which to you might seem very simple, is not simple in my eyes. So I would like to thank you for that and, and wish myself that I will have that back home as well. So if you also can help us do that back home. <laughs> no, in a way. I mean, you, I mean, you can do that. I mean, at least try to help us make that. Uh, everyone from their own movements and from their own, you know, where they, you come from, but it's really such a, an inspiring picture. And I wish, I wish my, my congregants, the people in my community in Tel Aviv, though I live in Jerusalem, so I commute, but would, would be able to see me more sitting with the uh, ultra-Orthodox, Orthodox, and, and just, just talking. I mean, even, even not agreeing at all, but just sitting together, and I think that that conveys, and the medium is the message. So with that, I wanted to start. Um, uh, so, we're before Pesach, and of course, I, I, I've always had a feeling, first of all, I can't move, so it's strange for me, so I stand behind the podium. Um, that, and I, I'm sure you, you feel it as well, that the holidays are such moments of uh, opportunity. Because there is something about the Hebrew calendar, I assume many other calendars, but that's the one that I affiliate with and that I feel the most at home at. Um, that people's hearts op are open to different discussions during the year. And of course, we're all absorbed in, absorbed in everything that we do and with hard work and preparing the holidays, but there is something so, um, for, I think for us as rabbis, for you as rabbis, educators, um, that beyond all the hard work, people always want that added value of meaning. And it's different in Pesach, and it's different in Rosh Hashanah. Well, suddenly before Yom Kippur, everyone has become righteous, and they're speak, talking about spirituality. Yes, because it calls for something. It's a corner of our soul, of our heart, of our mind, that suddenly this holiday kind of invites us to, to go through that gate. And my adolescent... Uh, girls, they say, oh, it's, it's hypocrisy. Suddenly everyone is starting to be so pious and righteous. Of course, that's a way adolescents would look at this and we respect it because we work with them and we love them and we hope they love us as well. <laughs> and they do, they do. Um, but I think as, a, as an adult, we understand that simply just the way life is, that we're so absorbed in, in just living and doing and working that it's not that we suddenly became righteous or pious. It's simply we don't have the context to think seriously on these issues. And the holidays, they bring up 
opportunities for us as cultural agents, as religious uh, leaders to, to bring people uh, to talk about those issues. And I, and I feel that there is um, a deep yearning for that in all kinds of ways. So that's, of course, what I try to do today. And this is your whole full day on Pesach. But I wanted, it was important for me to say that I don't think it's only like because it's our duty. There is someone out there waiting for, for us to say something. Um, and in so many in so many places and Jason just we just spoke and he said that he was uh, in uh, in Tel Aviv uh, in the summer maybe and went to Shuka Carmel and he was it was Friday and he was surprised to see that unlike the um, you know the image of, of of Tel Aviv which is so secular and so there was it was very Shabbat people were saying Shabbat Shalom they were there is a feeling of Shabbat and, it, and that's exactly that. The time calls us for a different mood, for a different approach, for a different questioning, and, and we should just take advantage of that, I think. So you have the text in front of you, and I would like to, the, my question would be basically, how do we go through the seder and come out from the other side in one piece? <laughs> You know that, okay? It's a serious undertake that I think each and every one, we pass that every year with our families and certainly with our communities and, and in the larger Jewish um, community. It's always a challenge. So the first thing that really helped me a few years ago, and I would like to explore a few strategies with you. Uh, the main strategy is one that was invented or explored by Achad Am, and I would like to read, I'd like to read a, an article by him that I think is really illuminating. But the first thing I would like to say is that a few years ago, a, a, a friend of mine, she's a therapist, she said, Rani, and I was, you know, lamenting, you say, kind of crying over all those tensions of Leila Seder. And you have too, I mean, whoa. I just said to someone, I think that's an exchange. You got Sunday, but double, double holidays. And we don't have Sunday, but we have only one holiday. So that's a, kind of a fair exchange, I think. Um, every year, I think, we feel that it's not only because of, 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 the, of preparation. There is. There is tension there. Um, and, and that, that friend of mine helped me to understand something that really liberated me. And I would like to f start with that, and, and that's kind of the first title that I gave. No tension, no settle. And, and it's not just because there are so many things to prepare, and then matzah balls, and the charoset, you know, all those things that that year that we spent in Sweden, we, I discovered how much work it is. Usually my mother does it, malasot, that's the way it is. And suddenly, I mean, it's not such a big deal to prepare the dinner, maybe, but it's a big deal to prepare all the stuff around it, or that comes with it. But I don't think the tension comes necessarily from there. I think the tension is something which is intrinsic to this, to this night. And that friend helped me, to un helped me understand why. Because in, in a day when, in, an, in that night, when we gather different generations, and some, people's that we, some people that we've seen last five years ago, or I don't know when, Tanti Margaret from Palm Springs, uh, Miami, I don't know if there is a place like that. There is Palm Springs here. Okay, okay, so Fort Lauderdale or whatever. Not only that, the reason for the tension and its intrinsic to that night is because generational encounter is the core of that evening. Vihigata levincha. And of course, on Rosh Hashanah, I think also here, it's like a family gathering and people gather, maybe those, certainly in Israel, these are the two peaks of family gatherings, Rosh Hashanah and Elel Seder. And, and that's when you ask, with who, with who are you this year? You know, this kind of uh, questions, with, with your mother-in-law or with my mother? That's the main, you know, the Cold War. Okay, or not called. Um, but I don't feel that there is that tension in Rosh Hashanah. 
there might be some family tension or some gathering tension, but in, I think in Leila Seder, there is much more tension because the conversation between the dialogue between generations is the core of the evening, is the, play, is the game that we play. And just understanding that liberated me from the bad feelings that I had. Why is it like that? Why do I feel sometimes really squeezed when my father, who is the Seder leader, I see him, he's 70 something, I see my cousin who are 15 years younger than me, and I just see the gap. You know, he's from that generation who fought in all the wars, and he's so Zionist, and he's so, so. And they're like Channel 2, WhatsApp people, and whew, And I'm in between, kind of. I see them both, I hear them both, and I see the gap. He doesn't see it, by the way. He's singing. Yeah. They don't see it, by the way. They're texting. <laughs> but us who are in the middle, we see, I, I mean, I'm really, it's intensive. Needless to say that there are all those moments in the Seder that for some of us are also challenging or problematic from Shfocha Matcha to other parts of, of, the, of Leila Seder. I don't know, I feel quite, I don't know, I, there is a, like a mythology in, in, our, in my family with this Shfocha Matcha. I know I'll take a minute to tell it, just, you know, the personal is always, I feel, the, it's very important that my, my father is law, is a is a is very leftist okay i mean in comparison to him i'm like far right okay no koa is a zionist is israeli everything but still that's and my father is like central i wouldn't say left or right he's, and he's he's also a, a physicist and he's been working for years in the security research you know that's kind of don't ask, don't tell issue in that respect. I don't ask and he, and, he, and, he don't, and he doesn't talk. And that's the deal that we have for years. I don't know what he does exactly. I just know he goes to, he's going to work. Abba Oleh, Hoser, that's it. <laughs> Usually very late. And now comes for Hamadcha. Okay? You know, poor you I mean, he, here I don't have to explain. And I told my wife, I told him, and they were together. I don't know why our, the two sides of our, our, her parents and my parents, they really enjoy being together. So they decide every year to do it together. To my grief, I must say. After you listen to this story, you understand why. So I, I told him, my wife, you know what? When it comes to Shfocha Matcha, let's do, let's do it together, you and I. Let's do it and we'll, and we'll hold it. Because otherwise, he will take it there, my father will take it there, it will, it will go wild. And I see, and you know, and the pages, and Agada flows and, and we get there. And at the moment of emergency, she's drunk. <laughs> my wife is completely, you know, not there, laughing like Meshugene. And then my father stands up at the door. This was the height of the, you know, everything with Iran. That, that's what, what he was doing, okay? I don't know exactly, again, I don't know what, but... So for him, put your wrath, you know, pour your wrath onto the nations, it's not like general ongoing. I mean, there are particular nations that he, he really feels it, it's in his kishkes. And I respect it, you know, to that extent. So he stands near the door, I have to, I have to, I, I can stand here, this is much faster. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So, yeah. so he stands near the door, like the Prime Minister, you know, in Mount Herzl in, in Yom Atmos, in the Pentecost, and then shout, Shpoch Hamad Chai Goim! And my, and my, and my father-in-law, you know, he's sitting there, shush, so we're shush. And I just, I just want to die from, you know, from, oh, is that here, the problem? From, from, you know, embarrassment. <laughs> but you know, that's the way it is. That's the way it was. And, and, and of course, they, things continued, and the Seder Pesach continued. And then we came home, and then we came, you know, and we speak at home. And say, so I involved my wife, she, afterwards, she said, Ah, it was such a fun Seder! <laughs> <laughs> I said, you traitor, where have you been? Have you happened to see what happened? It was my, the worst Seder I had in my life. I was completely embarrassed by this, and, and then when I wanted your help, you weren't there. Whoa, <laughs> you know, this was a very, I, it was like a few years ago, but I still remember it, and, 
But that's also the tension. Because the conversation, it's very hard to just eat. There is a text, there is a conversation going on, and, 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 and that conversation brings it onto the table, you know, all the cards, all, all our ideological and personal and Jewish identity and political identity, it's there. I'm sure, it seems to me, I'm quite sure that on your, set of, on your table settle, uh, the, the um, uh, presidential campaign will be present. It's almost unlikely that it won't be there. But it's hard. I mean, and, and the thing is that in a regular in a in a regular dinner you can escape it somehow. But here, when you come to Shvok Hamatcha, you'll have those people and those people. I mean, as a symbol also, you know, relating to that. And through that, they will tell you what they think about ISIS or I don't know what. So the first thing I would like. To, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't want to force. Uh, the first thing I would like to say is. That for me, it was liberating to understand that um, the tension is part and parcel of the event. And it's useful, it's, it's simply unuseful to, be, uh, to have also bad conscious about it. Kind of that we, we spoiled something. We didn't, uh, we didn't make something right. No, we made everything right, and tension is there, and that's part of the evening. Of course, we can think how to, uh, to hold it, to not to make it reasonable, to, to make it pleasant in a way. But in, in many, many ways, this generational gap and ideological gap, gap will be there. And we have to recognize it. And we have to acknowledge it and, and accept it, I think. OK, so that was the first, the first thing I wanted to say. Um, the, next, the next kind of thought um, is of course inspired by the, by the Mishnah. A Mishnah that you all know very well. But you know, as, as many of these texts I, I, I read it every year, and I'm sure as so many of us, we read the same text every year, and we find unity in them. We tell it to our, I mean, I'm sure you can with your congregants, but it's true. It's true, they are. And, it's, and, 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 and the sages are great about it in general, I think. They have. They have the wisdom, and especially here in the Mishnah, uh, I don't know if you know Ari Elon, he's a, he's a Talmud scholar, and, uh, and he, w he once explained to me what's the difference between Mishnah and Talmud, and, and that was so illuminating for me. He said, Mishnah is super epic, Talmud is unconsciousness. <laughs> and that's such a bright definition of what is Mishnah and what is Talmud. Okay? Because Mishnah is so sober, and so refined, and everything, everything is so clear. You do this and this and that, and there are no, it's like poetry. And then Talmud goes wild. Everything that was, you know, pressed down, all the sentiments that were pressed down, come out in the Talmud, in stories, in, in you know, in all the Agadot, in all those sentiments that you don't, you don't hear about them in the Mishnah. And I love that. Uh, insight of Ari Elon. So I, 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 I quote it many, many times. So in this famous Mishnah from Psachim, which is also, of course, in the Haggadah, they say, Rabban Gamliel haya omer, kol shelo amar shoshat varim ele bepesach, lo yatsa yadeh chobato. Ve'elu em, pesach matsa umaro, pesach al shum shepasach hamakom al batei avotenu bemitzrayim, matsa al shum shenigalu avotenu bemitzrayim, maror al shum shemerevu amitzrim et chaye avotenu bemitzrayim. So I want to stop here for a minute. And w w what do you think is the, um, the principle that is modeled here in this? Because kind of this is the central tool of, of Seder et al. in general. Okay? Well, how would you define the principle? What's going on here? What's the tool? What's the method for what's for Yeah. Where are we? Yeah. Where are we finding ourselves? 
Okay. Okay. Yes, please. I mean, I think the main point is life was horrible and God helped us. The, the, that's the general narrative. Right. I think the content, that, and that's that. That's what you're talking about. But I want also, if you can relate to the method, to the, method, to the educational method or to the uh, conversational method here. Yes, please. I, I see it as putting us right back to the Erev Pesach, which our ancestors experienced, mm -hmm. uh, that those three things are the key of the, why we are here tonight. Okay. So they take, we try to reenact that <coughs> that the, evening. The as if. Yes? Yeah, I was going to say the as if because it's uh, so critical. Wait a second. I, don't want, I, I want to hold you for a second because there's, the as if is a key. Okay. So I don't want to put it, you know, just like a footnote. Okay. okay? But I want to stress something that sometimes, I think it's clear, but I want to make it, you know, formulate it. There is here an, an, an amazing connection being made between ob objects and content. Okay? And we, I think, especially, I, I, it's, I, I hope it's okay if I say us, but we are like the, the meaning people. So we are leaning toward text, and you know, and vocabulary and phrases, but Chazal, I love them in that they were they had an understanding of the po of popular mind. You can't, you know. Okay, of course, it's very important. God in search of man. I mean, a book. I mean, just as a, it's very important. But then, when you sit there in front of the table, you can't now open that and start. You have an object, and they have great respect to, you know, to the physical. And they take objects, and they induce them with meaning. It's an amazing cultural understanding of how you produce a conversation, which is, which is by the way, the, the, the nice thing about it is that it, it's also um, kind of age open. Five-year-old can relate to an object, and a 95-year-old person can relate to an object. The difference is what? How you relate. Yeah, of course, but, but I mean. How you the, relate. The difference how, is, how you relate. Exactly, no. No. like Richard said. That the, the, the difference is how do you relate to them and what content you project on them. But the child can understand you. And, and, and so many times we hear that, you know, uh, about the kosher, you know, don't think so much about what you put into your mouth. You know, that's kind of the moralistic uh, criticism of, of eating kosher. Think out. more about what? Comes out what comes out of your yes, mouth. The but they say, I love them, because what they say, it's both important. What we put in, the, they kind of, in this moment, they bond together what comes in and what comes out. You eat the maro and you say maro. You eat the, uh, the, uh, the matzah and you say matzah. Right. And they have, I think they have a very deep understanding of the connection between the physical and the conceptual. And they don't break it. On the contrary, they want, to, they want to keep it together and at the same time it's different. And one of, I think one of the most um, um, we know it also kind of the the ability to midrashize food to, to midrash to make midrash out of food. Right. You know, just doing that, you know, just doing that. I mean, just expanding it for a minute. I've seen it. I'm sure many of you maybe you've done it. I mean. It's so, it's so creative, you know? Even when you see it in front of your Leila Seder uh, table, just to, to look on other things and m midrashize them, okay? Try to midrashize the, uh, co Coke Zero. <laughs> okay, that we have zero, I don't know what, zero uh, misfortunes, I don't know. Here, of course, it's more, it's more uh, sophisticated because Hebrew is a very, you can do it better. I mean, of course, 
we had it understood that when we talk like about it a lot, how generation. much, how much. I mean, you can't you can't go through through Jewish culture without Hebrew because of that aspect of, of Hebrew that is calling from the past. That you can say that the Torah is not yeah. Okay. Yeah. Without without that ability to you know to play to play with this, with the difference between the written and what is expressed. I mean, that's, that's the hook on which 90% of, of Hazan is, is hung on that. But here, and there is also something in, in, in Hazan, which I think is, in this, in, in this Mishnah, which is also spectacular. Say that we can talk a lot, a lot about freedom and all of that. But then they come to us and they say, which is, which is so, which is such a, um, Just three, not twenty, not hundred. Yesterday we had the task. Someone said that's like tweeting. <laughs> yes, I think it, that's right, and that's good. That reminds me, and I keep on, you know, feeling that that on one hand the stages are such, they, like they talk to, you know, Talmud pages and pages and pages and pages, and pages of conversations to an extent that you're almost, you know. Drowning. On the other hand, they're exactly the people that produce the Gerbo. Isn't that remarkable that the same people that can, can exhaust you with, with, with words can also produce tweet like Jewish ideas that still nourish us 2,000 years after? I don't know what you feel. I think we don't do better than that. <laughs> Amen. People ask me about that fila, my congregation, and probably about yours as well. What are the principles? And I say, you know what? Torah, Avodah, and Milut Chasadim. Yes. Of course, we need, to, we need to then elaborate what is Torah, and what is Avodah, and what is Milut Chasadim in our context. But then the thing is in that, that we do so much that, uh, you know, this person comes to us. Many times, but, but many times the dogs, well, and they say, uh, so, Amy, or Rani, uh, what is Shabbat? Can you say something about Shabbat? It's like this, and like this, and I'm not really sure. It's a question. And, you know, we, 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 we love to, to do this, you know, to say, oh, they ask me, so I reply with the question. Oh, you know, it's also very kind of with the Yiddish side. But sometimes I, I think there is something to an extent of irresponsible. And Hazan are ready to assume this responsibility. Sometimes we have to give an answer. An answer which is only the beginning, like he left and the gift. And Shammai pushes him away, but he says, you know what he said. And the rest did more. Mm -hmm. But he says something that you can relate to, and you can reject, and you can work with. About, uh, I think, uh, the, um, the acknowledgement that culture cannot only work with very long phrases and a lot, a lot of pages. People do need with phrases, you know, phrases that are catchable. And it's not low culture at all. And it's not, I mean, we shouldn't despise it. I, I sometimes feel because that's also the kind of the milieu that we're in many, many times. Oh, it's not. It's not serious enough because you haven't written 50 pages. I think it's even harder to write it in three words. It's more refined, it's more responsible, it's, it's more difficult, it's much more difficult. Give me three things for Pesach. No, no, no. we were in Egypt and it was hard. Pesach, Matzah, Umar, Wow. Yes, please. Why do you think things are always in groups of three, like Torah, Wadad, Mibu, Chasadim, Torah, Israel, Pesach, Matzah, Maror? First of all, there are also other groups of other numbers yeah, at the yeah. end. Of, uh, there is something, you know. It's also the trilogy. Nahon, all the tri yeah. uh, there is something, maybe it's like a so triangle. A meshulash. Yeah. Yeah. A meshulash. A meshulash. Yeah. It's like a triangle. I think it's stable. I, you know, I'm, I'm, I love music. I'm not a musician. I'm a very amateur musician. But for me, it also has a rhythm. Yeah. Okay? Na na ni na 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 na. Na na ni na 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 na. It's a rhyme. Seriously, the Mishnah is musical. 
we know it, by the way, I'm sure we know it, that people know, knew it by heart. And they knew it by heart with music, mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean in, in many communities it's already lost, but in, in, in diasporas, people knew the Mishnah by heart. Children memorized it with melodies. And there are, um, there are Yemen melodies and Tunisian melodies and Ashkenazi melodies, but it's beautiful. We hear, it. sometimes when you walk in Masha Arim, you can still hear that. It's something, of course, try to compose an Agada in the Talmud. See you in 20 years. Okay? It's, it's impossible, it's chaotic, and that's part of the fun in it, okay? It's more of a play. This is poetry. And I think there is a lot of beauty in this refinement. So, Pesach Matzal Moro. Okay, so uh, the connection between objects, uh, that's symbols and content, objects and their content. And here they were also very wise, uh, or the, it's, it's a potential, because when we have the object, and we keep the object, we can still work with the content. Okay, so con as we see that the, the distinction also between the object and the content, we understand that we can, and we do it so many times, we, we have the same object, but we relate to it in a different way, and that is what enables us to sit around the same table with the same object, but to do it <coughs> differently. Okay, so that's one thing. Now, I want to go to, uh, to what uh, your name is Eva. hidden by Eve. Okay. Keilu. So the next phrase, וכמובן, בכל דור ודור חייב אדם לראות את עצמו כאילו הוא יצא ממצרים. So one comment I, I'm, I'm, I'm always, I, I'm, I, I'm really, um, it's even important for me to, to, to tell you this, I don't know if you know it, but the, the, the socialist pioneers, the Zionists, what was the word that they despised in this sentence the most? They really resented. They really, really liked because they felt deeply Jewish. They felt, and yesterday someone told me, obliged. No! The pioneers, you know, the, the, the Halutzim were obliged like crazy. They weren't obliged to Torah, to, you know, to religion, to Allah. But they were obliged to the, people, the, like, to the Jewish people like they were burned with obligation. They were, the word that they couldn't take is Ke'il. Lama, why? Because for them it was what? It was real. And their criticism on Jews, especially those in, the, in, in their generation was that every year they keep on saying Lashana Aba Yerushalayim Ke'ilu. Ke'ilu, as it is. Yeah, like the Kuzari says, you know, the king, to the king of Kuzar, the, the, the Jewish oh. The thinker, he says, you know, King of Kuzar says, so why don't you go to Jerusalem? You say every, says, it's like the quack of the duck, we say. Yeah. And for the pioneers, that was the, the for them, the Ilu was a, was a, I would say, a, a Christianization, miniature, but very condensed, of Jewish hypocrisy of their time. <coughs> You know, sitting there, talking about Eretz Israel, you already have the opportunity to go, you have the, the movement, and you're, and you're there in Odessa, and in Warsaw, and Ke'ilu, 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 Ke'ilu. And what, what they were fighting for was not Ke'ilu. Mamash. As the, as the, as the Chabad say, Befal Mamash. Befal Mamash. At the same time, of, I'm sure you know, and this is why I also uh, love to quote it here, they were producers of new Haggadot to an extent that only today people recognize the, 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 the amount of Jewish creativity that was there. You know, there is a, the, the archive of the kibbutz movement with about three, four, five hundred Haggadot, Haggadot of Pesach that were written in kibbutzim in the 20s, 30s, and 40s, uh, until today, but especially 30s and 40s, especially during the Shoah. There is a whole book on this, it's, he it's in Hebrew, but if you, it's amazing, like the story of the Kibbutz Haggadah. 
Because if there was a story, by the way, in this prayer, if there was a, if there was a, a story in all Torah that they identified with, it was exactly that. Behold, door by door, chayav adam yirod et atzmo. Not someone else, himself, as someone who came out of Egypt, and we have to do it. So they wanted to turn the word ki'ilu on its head. Not to ki'ilu, mamash. At the same time, having said that, wow. It's only the introduction. Okay, we'll move to Akadam quickly. But um, I want to stress also, I think here, that Chab uh, Chabad, Chazal, had, Chazal had the, 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 the met, they were great writers. Because in this Hebrew that they've introduced into the sentence, they have also, um, in God's grasp, a paradox which is in this sentence. And what's the paradox? We are obliged to, to do what? Trivial, okay. We are obliged to feel as if we came out of Egypt. As if we leave it. Leila Seder is not like remember. It's like we have to. It's happening now, and that's why we try to do things with, with food and children and, and all this pressing, okay. But at the same time, of course, what? We didn't. It's a ke'ilu. It's a ke'ilu. This is the distinction between history and memory. It's not an existential, I mean, for many, many, or most of us, yeah? maybe those who came from former Soviet Union, maybe they have, but, for most of us, we didn't came out of some regime that um, um, I assume of persecution. Most of us, I mean, um, I, I assume, I guess, people sitting in this room. So in Israel, and so Hassan, they were, they, they were obligating us to feel that way, but they, they, the word ki'ilu is an acknowledgement of the difficulty of doing it. And the gap, the imminent gap between that. And yesterday I said to a group that I studied it, uh, it with them, we're facing the same challenge with another chapter in Jewish history, and that is what? Exactly that, that challenge. With the Shoah. Yeah. In 10 years, at Ma'adai Srim. But we all know that Holocaust survivors are not going to be with us in 10, 15, 20 years. Yeah, strange. Huh? It's strange. It's strange to think about. Up, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's I, I'm now a part of a group in Israel. Maybe I'll give you also. I want to say something about it at the end. Maybe. We, we try to produce a new, uh, not necessarily Haggadah, but a text for Hitkansut, for a Yom HaShoah gathering, yeah, in, 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 a, in, in understanding of the horizon, that that's the horizon that we're going to. And that the burden of carrying on the memory is on us, and Todala El, we're not Holocaust survivors. I look on the, in this room, I guess. Or second generation, maybe. Ken Avazeloze. And I'm happy that it's, I'm sure you're happy that it's not that. And we have to acknowledge the difference. We go to this show at Disneyland and we try to make people feel as if they were there. And we're not there. And I don't think any one of us is there. So the ke'ilu is how do you make people feel connected but at the same time acknowledge that there is an existential gap? Somehow needed to, needs to be Especially in this room with rabbis who were educated people. People who came out of Egypt, they were, Ampa, they were not educated. They were simple. And we get so carried away as all the Hazarai as we do our Seder with the mystical meaning of this and the deep, that we lose people who aren't interested and they go away from the entire shoot. And they walk away from Pesach and they walk away from the Israel. So I think the Kehillah is not necessarily only the feeling, but to put ourselves intellectually as well in the place of the We talked about yesterday. That's completely, I mean, I, I follow you completely. And had we had the time, I don't know, uh, 
I really like a quote from Bialik. That someone asked him what to do, and one of the most important things that he says at the end of his, of his recipe is don't be too clever. Don't be too clever. Pesach, Matzah, Umaro. Having said that, I'm not saying don't be sophisticated, don't be thinking, don't. But we are sometimes there. I, 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 I'm telling you, that's part of my work also at Hartman. We work with educators that go and spread over all over uh, high schools in Israel and, and teach. And you start trying to make it better. And, and I can tell you one thing. And, and your remark is amazing in that respect. Every time that we write a book for seventh grade, it really fits ninth grade. Every time that we write for ninth grade, it really fits twelfth grade. We're always talking there, and people are there. We kind of, we miss it. We miss it constantly. And, and um, so I think your remark is so important here that also Hajar directs us, keep it, you know? Not everyone is uh, Heschel, Soloveitchik, Hartman, Ken, Chashuv, 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 it's very important. And still, you know, respect those who are into this intellectual journey, but not everyone, and certainly, speaking of center table, certainly not everyone around the center table is that. Yeah, I just, I, I give you, my uncle is from, is a Jew, uh, like he's uh, 80 something, he's a Jew from Bulgaria, they spoke Ladino, so we sing also the Ladino song. He can barely read the Hebrew. He can barely read. He lives in Israel for 50 years now, 40 years, yeah, 50 years. He can barely read the Hebrew. So what are you, t now at the same time, there is my mother who is a literature teacher and she wants like uh, poems by, uh, I don't know, my angel, I don't know. <laughs> How do you do that? But yes, we need to keep, and, and, and it's not a thing, I, I really want to say, he's, he's not stupid. Not at all. An interesting word is my answer. But simply there, we need to keep that in mind. Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. Yes. I feel like you're already going to move into the next step. So I don't know yes. But, but I would just offer that. <coughs> and, and I told you because I laid my, my tired thought that it's pissed off to make me play this. not simplistic. I have a friend from Hartman, he goes for, like, he can give a whole class on one sentence from Pirkei Avot, on one phrase. And it's like, you can't believe what's there, what tensions, like, Afilu Moshe Kibet Torah mi Sinai, it sounds like a chain of, so it's, it's short, but it's not simple. Just to be clear, it was more a response to your comment, that I think this is about Okay, as well? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Sure. 
So before I want to, I really want to give respect to Echad Ha'am because I think his take is really important. Just one more, one more thing about the whole door vador, which, which I think, it, for me at least as an educator, is uh, someone uh, deals with education. I don't know, educator sounds so. Um, there is also something important here that they, and that is the process. The whole door vador chayav adam lirot et atimo, and then they say the igata lekifah. I can tell you with teachers, I don't know about you. When we teach, usually they want to take the text and run to the, to the class tomorrow morning. And I tell them, wait, 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 wait. First, they want to take more. You want to touch it. And in so many organizations and communities, how many times we had a staff meeting about Jewish identity? Okay, I, I, I see it with the teachers. They run to teach, to talk, Jewish identity with the students, but they haven't gone through the process themselves. They have not been immersed in this marinade. Ma uh, they haven't been marinated in the conversation themselves. And they run to the students, and what is uh, being Jewish for you? But hey, 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 Rani, have you sat with uh, Daniel and, I don't know, Michael? Ha have we explored it a little bit among ourselves? I am I really gone through that process before I went on talking about it with my children or other or students, I find that such a feta uh, um, We always, kind of, I mean, teachers always do it. And there is also something here that says, take the time to do it among adults. Adults first. And here, with that, I will conclude kind of the introduction. Just one minute. And maybe because I was flying a lot in the past few days, it kind of occurred to me that that's also you know, in, in, the, in the safety instructions, they say if the oxygen mask uh, comes down, first, first, uh, first on you, then on your children. Cal culture, tradition, they say. First take the max, um, oxygen mask to you, then put it on, on someone else, on your children, on the, on, the, on some, you know. And suddenly, wow, that's a physical principle, but also a cultural principle. Or a, 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 really, a religious principle, because we tend to fall in there. And, and of course, not only that we pay by the fact that we go through the, go through the process ourselves, one of the, of course, the best detectors of, of being phony are children. Yeah. If you go and say, oh, Pesach is so important, and, and they say, so what is Pesach? And suddenly you say, well, um, bird, you know, so you, <laughs> they feel so quickly. If you have gone through the journey, or you are just giving them the mambo jumbo, you say kind of the, the the slogans. And by the way, the worst people with slogans are educators. Lama <laughs> Tanakh, oh, because it's important, and for 2,000 year years, well, come on, but give me something, you know? Yes. So, so that's a, I think a great point. So how does one feel as if I have come out of Egypt? Because I didn't, not only didn't come out of Egypt, but I didn't even have hardship in the United States. I mean, my father used to give me stories about the anti-Semitism he grew up with, and I would roll my eyes mm -hmm. because I didn't. So the truth of the matter is, mm -hmm. I've had a long career even as a rabbi, and I'm not, I mean, I'm, I thank God to have a synagogue that doesn't have swastikas written on it. You know? I mean, put, you know, so things like that. So, so how does one answer that question if you haven't been through hardship as a Jew? I mean, we have it, we know what the United Nations does, we know what the world does in terms of Israel. We, we, we all have some of that experience even yeah. today, but how does what happen? Hmm? Yeah, so they got yeah, bored. What? We decided to get bored. Ah, yeah. so got, yes, we have been through hardship. That's it. No, that I agree. That I agree. But we still not redeem. Yeah. Uh, but, but, yeah. Yes. See, we are not a Mashiach redeem. But all birds are... <laughs> that, that are the message of Pesach is not Jewish, it's universal. And, uh, and and this idea of, uh, you know, because I, one of my places of work represents uh, the KU for me, right? Uh, being a prison chaplain. And uh, everybody's invited to, to experience uh, the lack of freedom and the hardship and, uh, and all that. I always invite, nobody ever comes. Um, <laughs> but I always invite for Kolamo et Pesa to come with me. But um, so the message is universal. We we don't have to look at uh, at um, 
freedom is not at, just a collective. Yeah, at, at the, you know, the Shoah and all that. You know, in Israel, there are people that, uh, you know, the, the, the foreign workers, the, the, the uh, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, okay. Uh, so so the, mes the, the message is universal, and unfortunately, uh, if we want ceased. to do the Keilu, uh, <coughs> we just have to, to decide to, to, to walk a couple of steps and, uh, and find yes. the, the, okay. the I, I, I wish we could continue with that. And, and, and actually, your question, of course, is, is, is burning. I, um, so I, I want to get to Hada. But okay. I, I, Baruch, okay. I think this is a very serious question. By the way, there is, there, by the way, there is a, a great quote in Israel talking about prison. And he, made a, he was a teaching poetry in prisons. And he wrote an amazing poem, Lebet Akneset. Can I say this? Yes. Lebet Akneset. So think of, of the, the, the synagogue in, in, in prison. Has, it's called Hifkadeti uh, Shomrim. I, I put guards on you, okay, which is of course a phrase referring to, on the walls, which is a phrase referring to Jerusalem. But for them, it's that's the name of the synagogue within the prison. And maybe I, I send it to you. It's in, because and he grasped kind of the the irony and, and the relevance of the, of the phrase, which is kind of, but for them, you know, they're, but, they're but for them, that lack of freedom is not something from some, it's the name of, oh, it's their existential the experience. Yeah. So, so let's go to a Hanam yeah. wow, like in 25 minutes. What I ask you to do, <coughs> here is just the background. Hanam, you know, you all know of him. Sorry. Secular thinker, Zionist. My grandfather's cousin. The rest, uh, I don't want to. Now, just as a bio biographical background, what we need to understand, because I think biography is part of, 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 of what you write. Unlike, you know, don't look on, on biography. Yes, look on biography. We're talking here about existential moments. So, what do you mean? Life of people are part of the story. So, Akhada was secular. But his father was very traditional. I don't want to, I don't even shoot to, if the word orthodox applies. You know, it's Eastern Europe. That's the Jew. You know, the Jew from Eastern Europe. The, 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 the one of the reasons, and Achadam stayed in his home and even worked for him for a while because one of the reasons that he stayed, and I'm not saying he's cynical because his father was wealthy. Unlike many of the other, you know, people who ca became secular, but their parents were very poor. So part of moving out was from an economic reason. They couldn't support, the, their, their families couldn't support them. But the father wanted to stay with his father. On, on many, because of all kinds of reasons, including that. So actually, I'm describing it because they sat every year to let us settle together. Now, he had that problem that we've been describing for the last uh, half an hour. That his father believed in the story in every, you know, in the, in the basic, you know, <coughs> simple. That's what happened. And he did it. So the question is, and, and if you please just see for Chavuta for, in Chavuta for like five, seven, few minutes, and try to explore or, or get the, the, the understanding, what is the method that he suggests in order for him and his father to sit together to the, le to the same center? Even though, ideologically, Jewishly-wise, they go like this. They, they don't, it's not that they're in collision, they simply don't interact. It's like that. Two polar, two, two extremes, okay? So let's take a few minutes. Okay. You asked me about the uh, Hebrew uh, original. I don't, I don't know if you're familiar with that website called Project Ben Yehuda. Do you know that? No, I don't know. Project Ben Yehuda. Project Ben Yehuda. I think it's Ben Yehuda. But if you Google in Hebrew, Project Ben Yehuda, this is all. All, all the Hebrew uh, modern texts that the copyright has expired and they're tied into full text into the name. Moshe, all Achadaam, all Herzl, all Bi 
spelling, all poetry, call Z, it's on the list. I think that's the most important thing that's said today. <laughs> no, seriously, seriously. It's such a Okay. I'm sorry. Uh, the English you will have to get, but I'm sorry. It's an amazing treasure. First of all, for you to read, to use, to know that it's all there. It's to find help and, 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 and all the thinkers. It's like, like that. Because you can also search it, of course, with Google, with yeah. certain words. And then if you want something for your sessions, you just copy-paste and you don't have to, you know, it's all there, you're just... It's all there. Madhi, madhi, madhi. And, by the way, it's all uh, volunteers. Uh, retired people and students, they tap in and someone also revises it, so to make sure that there are no typos, you say, no yeah. typos. It's all volunteer work and it's thousands of pages. Zepashut, Yotzeh Minaklad. So again, bye bye. That was my... Contribution. Benyehuda.org. Zemamash, Zepashut. Lo yuman. So, so, so let's make the story short because we have uh, like a few minutes. What's the method that he suggests? What's the, the distinction that really... First of all, you, what do you say about the article? It's good. Okay. He knew how to write Mr. Yeah, Al-Khada. Yeah. That's for sure. <laughs> I mean, he knew that something that he knew. Right. Uh, Bialik says that he was his student as far as Hebrew. Al-Khada you know, invented Hebrew for a whole generation. Because he was writing in a way that people could understand. Before him, people kind of, uh, you know, uh, revived Hebrew, but like writing who, who could read it? <laughs> right. Adam, the his Odessa school, uh, Bialik and the others, they really launched a Hebrew which is uh, approachable. So, so what's the, what's the thing? What's the, what's the distinction that, that enabled him to sit through the same seder with his father? Moshe exists because they said thousands of years later talking about Moshe. So the basic distinction, let's, start, let's, let's just make it uh, accurate. Two words. What are the words? What are the. There are two truths. Archaeological. I want to say it in English. And and historical. And there is archaeological truth and historical, and historical truth. Right. What's the archaeological truth? Can you find it? Can you find the bones of Moses with the tomb saying, here Moses was buried, and of course we know that. It wasn't because even the Bible, but uh, David HaMelech, okay? All the archaeology of uh, Israel is based on that. That we want to find Objects. Uh, the Objects. proof, Objects. the stamp of David HaMelech. And we understand also the, the inclination towards that, you know, to find it. So, uh, uh, histo uh, archaeological truth. At the same time, there is what? Historical fact. Which is what? It's, it's mythical on one hand, but it's very concrete. Mm -hmm. Why? It's over the centuries. It's over the centuries. So two things here, which I love. I, I didn't give you the whole thing. But once he said, first he says, I can't understand you. Do you think that it would really matter for me if, to celebrate the Seder if I know that you found the bone of Moses or didn't find the bone of Moses? I mean... Two years ago, I was at uh, my grandmother's and we celebrated it. I don't care for, uh, you know, if you found it or not. What? Secondly, he says something very interesting. As far as lifespan, the actual archaeological Moses, thinking that he lived, lived for 120, I think, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Shana, mm -hmm. historical Moses is already with us for 3,000 years. Mm -hmm. I mean, what do you want to say? That... You know, this figure that lives with us for already 3,000 years, we're going to push it because those 120 years were or were not? That's one. And also, it comes from a lot of respect to what? That's, I think that's the, that's the, the crux of it. That's the, he moves the playground from, from where to where? From Egypt to Israel. I, and I, I, by the way, it's not only when he talks of Moses. Mm -hmm. Where is it? Where is it? Present. Thank you very much. Yeah. Exactly. What, what matters here, here 
is the mind of the people. That's the playground. That's the playground on which we play, and that's the, and that's the playground that comes from it, he said. I just want to tell you that it's it's not here only. He's even more rather than that. Okay, Moses. But that he had a, a furious debate with with Glenn, of course. You know, very secular writer and God. And Brennan goes, what? Are you crazy? He says, yes. Archaeologically, he might not be here. I mean, ar archaeologically, not in the mm -hmm. sense that we find any remnants, but you know what, you understand what I mean? In the mm -hmm. Historically, of course he exists. That's the most powerful po uh, uh, force in Jewish history. That's the force that formed and shaped the minds and hearts and deeds of all our ancestors. So you can not believe in God, but do you believe in your grandmother? That's what he tells me. So he says, even if you, and, and I think there's something so, I didn't bring it on to just to tell you what Ahadam said, but I think it's, it's a tool. Because what he says is, you can be a complete atheist, but if you care for these people, if you have some, some connection to our history, to our to, to your family, then you need to, to be in dialogue with these concepts. You can even negate them, but you're in dialogue with them. Because that's your... That, these are the concepts that have, that have shaped us for centuries. And in, the, in, in that respect, they have shaped you as well. And as far as you don't see yourself, and, may, and here I just want to do a, a quick connection to that quick son who says, Ma avodazot lachem. Ma avodazot lachem, it doesn't mean to say, it just, you know, apartment myself from the collective. That's the problem there. It's not that he says, uh, Egypt didn't exist, Torah is not true. What he says is, alienation from Gabriel. I don't have anything in you. Ma avodazot lachem. I'm given you there. So Akadam really says, that's the wickedness. And as long as you feel yourself part, or you want to be a part in some way, then you have to, or it's your, part of the game is to be engaged with those concepts, even if you don't believe in them. He tells him, it's a beautiful uh, uh, rephrase. So you have to, and he says, uh, you have to be, <laughs> you have to talk to God if you don't believe in it. Footnote kind of a story. Many, many years ago, Shulamit Aloni, I don't uh -huh. know who yeah. she was, yeah. a member of Knesset, a, a liberal, merit, you know. And, and you know, she had a constant fight with the Haredi, with the ultra orthodox because she was who she was, and they were who they were, and it was a constant, you know, uh, clash. As, and when she was the Minister of Education, when she stood in Knesset on the podium, and she says, and she said, in Iftara, she died, as well, oh, yeah, sure. and she said, how can you talk like that to me? A Jew that stood with you at Sinai! <laughs> <laughs> Even though that it didn't happen. <laughs> okay? <laughs> yes. I, I just want to say, you know, Herodotus, I think it was, said history is only written by the winners. Mm -hmm. So it's our belief, it's our tradition, it's our history. And nobody can really challenge that and say, well, let's look at it archaeologically. This is our Jewish history. Yeah, so it, and he also says, okay, go, go and do your research on the matter of my sentiment and my willingness to be part of it. It, w it wouldn't change. Because, so, because also the weight of it is not parallel to my bond to these concepts right. and to the rituals and to the music and to the values that I find in it. So that's also trans transforming from objects, as Gabriel said, from objects to values. The playground is values and feelings and thoughts and not, still of course, we have Chazal were ringing the bell and saying, and what about objects? So there is here, a I mean, it's not completely 
I mean, it's not completely easy to do the Achada Ammu, but I think it's sensational. Mm -hmm. I think that the distinctions that he, the distinction that he makes is extremely powerful, and it does it more. I mean, it doesn't solve all the issues. It has a lot of challenges as well. Yes, please. It reminds me, I, had, I was at an interfaith conference in Texas, and I met a minister. Oh, yeah. Sure, I was at an interfaith oh, we were, we were at that conference, conference Lake, Lake in, Texas, yeah. in Texas, and I, we met this minister who said that if they found the bones of Jesus, and they could prove that it was Jesus' bones, he would convert to Judaism, because that meant Jesus wasn't resurrected. If they found the bones and they could prove it, he would convert to Judaism. And I remember thinking to myself, there's nothing you can find for me that makes me to lose Judaism or convert to another religion. Okay, there's nothing. Inside, the right. bones of Amana Rasha, ma. Or, or, no, 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 there's nothing, or you, nothing you can disprove. You know, it's not on that it's on realm. A it's on a different level. I mean, of course, I'm saying. sure you have your questions and questioning. Right. And, but but it's not on that level. Right, it's not. On I that mean, level. you can question God. Right. You, ma, you can read. You, you right. just read Eov, and you have all of that. I mean, right. there is nothing right. new. Absolutely. Okay, but uh, but it's not an object from the British right. Museum that I'll bring Ilana and say, oh, right. now I'm con I'm becoming right. a right. Christian. Right. And I think he really caught something in that right. It's very Jewish. Right. Mm -hmm. The arche archaeology in that sense, Seder Pesach is not archaeological. Right. That's not what we do. We don't dig. We right. dig into the filter fish. I think, I, actually, 
actually, the, I wanted to talk about this, but it's, like, I think it's, it's too long and, and too serious. Um, I assume, looking at you, knowing some, some of you, that inclusiveness is one of the, uh, you know, purpose, big yeah. words, like uh, keywords, uh, inclusiveness. But I think also Hazal suggested some sort of a vote. And I think that's also a question for us. I'm also the inclusiveness guy. They always blame me that I do not. My children say that when I'm furious, I'm the funny. Parental some hood, authority that a person can have. But there is an issue of food. And I think those people, I think I feel at home, I, I feel, uh, with uh, that kind of push inclusiveness, I think from time to time, also the, that wicked style also brings up you know, uh, the question of what to do. If you tell me you don't want to belong, and I say, no, no, please belong. I say, no, no, please belong. Maybe there is a moment you say, you don't want to belong, I belong. And of course, when, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure the law, and, 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 and I'm certainly not a person to say you live in LA, who's the wicked for you and when, where is your boy? I, I would be completely, you know, not to do it and, and I'm trying not to do it. Then also in my community, it's very hard to say, you know, so I, I have to say it, Shanda. So, uh, there is a story, but I mean, we're always challenged by that. Where is the school? But I think they also tell us there, there needs to be a, 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 a it can be included to fully. That's what I hear in that, in that uh, wicked uh, child metaphor. And yet, of course, he's still there near, uh, around the table. So I, I don't really know where it went, but it's something to think about. And, I, and by the way, Akada Am was very, he wasn't a nice person. When someone irritated me, and my brother said, what do I have? He was Gino Sar, his name How can you be a national Jew without talking to God? Again, even if you don't believe it. He was very blunt about it. He said, you are kind of alienating yourself from the major concepts and, and, and forces that have shaped our people for, for centuries. So if you want to belong, it also, it obligates you to be in touch with this, with this, this way. So if you want to, to be known, it has a price. Pay the price. Or 